transparent surfaces are found anywhere, from eyeglasses and computer screens to windshields and camera lenses. The invention of invisible glass was a life-changing event that brought clarity to the world. But have you ever thought about who was the first person to make the glass invisible? Catherine Barblaget Catherine was born on 10th of January 1898 in Schenectady, New York. From an early age, she had shown a remarkable talent for mathematics. She graduated from high school at the age of 15 and went to Braemar College on a scholarship. In 1917, she was introduced to Arvin Langmuir, a future Nobel Prize laureate, and offered a tour of his laboratory. He encouraged Catherine to have a higher scientific education before working for him at GE, General Electric Company. Following his advice, she enrolled in a master degree program at the University of Chicago, where she explored absorption of gas on charcoal and the chemical structure of gas masks. She published a paper on a gas mask material in the scientific journal Physics Review at the age of 21, which developed charcoal filtering in gas masks and contributed to saving many soldiers' lives during World War I. After she finished her degree in 1918, Langmuir arranged for her to study physics at Cambridge University, where she became the first woman to earn PhD in physics at Cambridge. She was hired by GE in 1920, where she also became the first woman to get hired by GE. In 1935, Catherine collaborated with Langmuir to work on a single molecule thick barium coating to increase the amount of light passing through the glass. The normal glass reflects a significant amount of light, However, using a coating consisting of 44 monomolecular layers, the glass was made more than 99% transmissive. This created a non-reflective surface as a result. Her new inventions were used for projectors and cameras by the post-war movie industry. Additionally, her non-reflective glass was also used for submarine periscopes and airplanes by cameras during World War II. Generally, the 19th century was viewed as men's century, and women were only seen as housewives having no access to education. Catherine, however, found a way to change the norm and moreover made a way for other women to thrive and contribute to the field of science. Friends, they say it's a man's world, but don't you believe it? It's a woman's world too. Women are not only doing a fine job in the home and in industry, they are also making substantial contributions to scientific work.